morning everyone. So my name is George and I'm here tonight to share with you my own personal experience of what it was like to suffer with a mental health issue in the workplace. Uh, before I get into exactly what happened to me, I just want to set a little bit of context for how I first started suffering and also the place that I was working within. So I began suffering from depression and anxiety in my final year of university. And at the time, I didn't really pay attention to these feelings. I just pushed them to one side and focused on my degree. I graduated uh, nine months later and I began to look for a job. And pretty quickly, I found a good job working as a recruitment consultant within a VC fund. So we had the VC fund, we had eight recruitment businesses they had invested in, and they hired 20 of us graduates to be spread around these eight businesses. I myself was placed into one team, a team of five. I had my boss, my team leader, and three of us new graduates. So it was a good job, but being a VC fund, it was quite high pressure, high targets, high, uh, high stress. And this wasn't really the best combination for everything that was going on in my mind at the time. But despite this, three months in, I was doing well. And at the end of the first quarter, I had the highest sales figures there, and yet I was the youngest. So I was awarded the best graduate award, and I was essentially everyone's golden boy in the office. But to be honest, I was able to hide behind this facade. On the outside, I was uh, smashing it, as we like to say nowadays. <laughs> but, uh, on, the, uh, on the inside, I was really struggling. It had been over a year now that I'd been suffering from my mental health issues. I'd begun to seek the help of GPs and therapists. I was on medication. Uh, I wasn't really eating. I wasn't really sleeping. I was crying quite a lot. And um, perhaps hardest of all was that suicide remained a constant thought in my mind, all day, every day. It was the first thing that I thought about in the morning, and it was the last thing I thought about before I went to sleep at night. This was incredibly difficult to deal with as a 21-year-old man who, rather than being out enjoying the best years of his life, was trying to think about ways that he could end it. So, I knew that I needed to open up to someone at work, and uh, I went and had a conversation with my graduate trainer. This is a lady that was brought on by the VC fund just to train the 20 of us grads. So, I tell her what's going on, and she was great to be honest, she was very kind and very supportive and it was just what I needed. But she encouraged me to go and have a conversation with my boss as this concerned his business. So I did that. That week I had the same conversation with him. And again, he seemed kind, he seemed supportive. And he gives me a story about how he had suffered a nervous breakdown a few years previously. But his way of dealing with it had been to just get on with the job. So I came away from uh, this week feeling pretty motivated. I felt like I had a support network at work now of people I could trust and rely on. So I felt like things were looking up for me. But it wasn't that much longer after, perhaps about a month, that the business I was in was struggling. And this was difficult to be involved with when we were surrounded by other companies in the VC fund who were uh, smashing it. That's that phrase again. Um, so my boss held an emergency meeting between the five of us and he essentially told us to just pull our fingers out. And I came away from this meeting also feeling motivated. I wanted to do well here. I wanted to make a lot of money. So I told myself that I was just going to get on with the job. Uh, didn't quite work out like that. Later that day, I was approached by someone at work, someone that was close to my boss. And he says to me, I hear you're seeing a therapist. So my boss had told someone without my permission. And this is at a time when I was already suffering from pretty extreme paranoia. So that was my first problem. The second problem was, later that day, I get a text from one of my colleagues, and it's a photo of a piece of paper that's lying on my boss's desk. It turns out to be a printout of an email he sent to my team leader. The first line of this email read, I know George is having a few issues, but right now I couldn't give a flying fuck about it. So that obviously wasn't the nicest thing to read. Yeah, I saw a shock face by the way. The rest of the email, which is quite a long email, was complaining about the struggles of his business. And I was pretty much the sole target of that email. And that's despite the fact that my sales figures weren't even the lowest there. So I believe, and I still do believe, that I was the easy one to blame because I was ill. I was the easy scapegoat. I can't really tell you how sick I felt in that moment. Not only was this someone that I liked and respected, but this was my boss. And this is how he was choosing to handle my issues behind my back. 
I don't blame him for what he said or did. I understand that his company was struggling and he must have been under a great deal of stress. We've all done stupid things when we're stressed. And I understand that email was never meant for my eyes, but I did see it. And he shouldn't have said what he said. He shouldn't have told people without my permission. And he shouldn't have left this email lying on his desk in an open office environment. So I go uh, home pretty quickly, unsure how I'm gonna handle everything. And I come back into work the next day and luckily we've got a graduate training day off site. So it's just the 20 of us grads and my grad trainer, the original lady that I opened up to. And I get through the day and I, I tell her what's happened. And she begins to tear up, which to be honest was quite nice to see. Uh, it showed me that there is still a level of empathy in business somewhere. But uh, she tells me to go away over the weekend and to have a little think about what I wanted to do. And in the meantime, she's going to put things in motion with the VC fund. So I go away over the weekend and pretty quickly I know that I'm going to quit. And I come back in on Monday and my boss arrives late. He'd been with the VC fund having a conversation about this. So he was aware of what was happening. And when he comes in, he arranges a meeting with me and we go for coffee. And he says to me, I know you've seen this email that was on my desk, but why was it even being read in the first place? So that was his first question to me. It wasn't, how are you? Or I'm sorry for what you've read. It's pretty a selfish question. Next, we come on to the contents of the email. And he says to me, look, I don't mean that I don't give a flying fuck about what you're going through. I just mean that I don't care because I only want you to get better. So now he's lying to my face as well. So I tell him I'm quitting and I go pretty quickly home. It doesn't quite end there. Uh, later that week, I get a text from someone within the business. And they say to me, I think you'd be making a big mistake if you quit over something like this. And we all have problems, but you have to just leave them at home. That text, for me, sums up much of the ignorance that surrounds mental health issues today. Depression and anxiety aren't just something that you switch off. They're not a choice. You don't get to just leave them at the door with you whenever you want. They're horrible and woefully misunderstood illnesses. I think instead I should have been perhaps offered a better support network early on, perhaps flexible working hours or being able to work from home, or maybe just being given the time off that I needed. Instead, I was lied to, my issues were handled pretty badly behind my back, and I was essentially just told to get on with the job. This seems like the most obvious solution when you're working in a sales environment. You'll be told that it's not practical to take a lot of time off and that you'll lose your sales pipeline. But is this really more important than someone's health? Especially when a decline in that health can lead to suicide? Of course not. I think instead you should bring your problems to work, all of your problems, and you should be entitled to work in an environment where this is encouraged and you're supported for doing so. We need to encourage people to speak up more. It's too easy to put on a brave face and hide what you're going through. The guy in the room with the highest sales figures, he could be the one that's struggling the most. So uh, I'm keen to end on a positive rather than this. Um, I think that the, the lady I first opened up to, the graduate trainer, she was great. She was really supportive and really kind and we still stay in contact now three years on, so that's nice. Um, secondly, I've since started working for myself as a freelance writer, and I've had conversations with many of my clients about mental health and my own journey. And they've been great to be honest, they've been, we've had good deep conversations, and um, none of them have shunned me yet, so that's encouraging. Uh, and finally, just, just following the, the work that Sanctus do, the amazing work they do, it's, it's really great to see so many forward-thinking companies like you guys here tonight, who are taking the right approach on mental health. I think that we have come a long way with mental health, but I think that we still have a long way to go. And that's why nights like tonight are so important. Thank you for listening.